The first counting technique that I would like to discuss is called the multiplication principle. So let's say you flip one coin. How many outcomes do you have in the sample space? It's either a head or a tail, right? So if you flip one coin, it's either a head or a tail. So there are two outcomes in the sample space. What if you flip two coins? So there are supposed to be four outcomes in the sample space. How do I get a four? So first coin has two faces. The second coin has two faces. Two times two is equal to four outcomes. What about three coins? So the first coin has two faces. The second coin has two faces. The third coin has two faces. You multiply them, the total is eight. What about four coins? Then that will be two by two by two by two, right? So that is equals to 16. What if you have 10 coins? So that will be two times itself, 10 times. So that will be two raised to the 10th power. So raised two raised to uh, two raised to the 10th power is equals to 1024. How about the dice problem? So let's say we roll one die. So one die has six faces, right? So the total is six outcomes. And then two dice, so the first die has six faces, the second die has six faces, so six by six is 36 outcomes. And then three die, you have six, six uh, raised to the third power, right? So six times six times six. Equals to 216. And then if you have a four, if you have four dice, the first die six faces, second die six faces, third die six faces, the fourth die six faces. So you take the two sixteen times six, that is equals to twelve ninety six. What if you have eight dice? So that will be six times itself eight times, right? So six raised to the eighth power, that is equals to a huge value, sixteen seventy nine. 616. So that is the total number of outcomes in the sample space if you roll eight dice. Okay, what is the multiplication rule is trying to say? The multiplication rule is trying to say so let's say you have multiple events and they occur in sequence. So let's say we have four events, right? So event one, we have event one, event two, event three and then event four, right? We have four events occur in sequence. So the first event, there are W ways to, there are the W ways. So just like uh, back to the dice problem, the first event has six faces. The second event has six faces. So what, what about the first event has W outcomes? Then the next second event has X outcomes. The third event has Y outcomes. And then the last event has Z outcomes. So in general, how many outcomes are in this sample space? So that will be x w times x times y and then times c. So just like the coin examples and the dice example, all we have to do is we multiply everything together. Right? So that is called the multiplication principle. Let's take a look at the first problem, a four course meal. Suppose you are deciding a four course meal in a restaurant, there are eight appetizers, 20 entrees, and then 15 different drinks, nine different desserts, you pick one of each, how many combinations can, can you create? You pick one of each. So the first pick is, you pick one out of eight appetizers, right? So how many choices do you have? You have eight. And then the next one, you pick one of the entrees, you have 20 options. And then the next one, 15 drinks, you have 15 options. And then the last one, nine desserts, you have nine options. So you multiply them. Then you have eight times 20 times 15, and then times nine, the total is 216, followed by two zeros. So that is the total number of outcomes. And then the next problem, you are purchasing a new car. The possible manufacturers, car size, and colors are listed below. So you have three manufacturers, a Lexus, a Ford, and a BM, a size, compact, mid-size, full size, the color, black, white, red, silver. You have to pick one manufacturer, one size, and one color. But the thing is, the dealers, they don't know which one you will pick, right? I can pick a Lexus, a compact, and a black car. I can pick a Ford, a mid-size, and a silver car. You don't know which one I will pick. So I walk into the dealership. You don't know which one I will pick. And you don't want to disappoint me. So you have to prepare 
all the possible cars in the parking lot. So I will walk in, pick my uh, manufacturer, my car size and the color, and then you will have to show me that car immediately. The question is, well, you are, this is what you offer. How many cars do you have to prepare? So here is how many is for the manufacturer. There are three brands and then the size. There are three size and then color. There are four colors. So three times three is nine. Nine times four is 36. So they must prepare 36 cars in the parking lot. That's how you answer it. And then uh, the next one. So this one uh, is a little bit more complicated, not too complicated. An ice cream restaurant offers the following option for a banana split. So what is a banana split? You have a plate, right? You have a banana and then uh, they they put some scoops of ice cream. So let's say strawberry, uh, mango, uh, orange, uh, 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 what, what, what else? Uh, cherries. And then they, they put some creams in, in there, right? They put some creams and cherries and then a peanuts, so on and so forth. So they make a banana split. Uh, in my language, we call that a banana boat. <laughs> All right, so here is uh, your options. So customers can select three distinct flavors of ice cream from 15 flavors. So there are 15 flavors. You pick three distinct. So for example, strawberry, mango, and uh, pineapple. So three distinct flavors from 15. So don't worry about the rest. How many, how many choices do I have in here? Just consider the ice cream only. So there are 15, you pick three dis distinct flavors, right? So the first flavor, I have 15 options. And then when it comes to the next flavor, I cannot repeat the first. So I only have 14 options left. And then when I comes, when it comes to the third ice cream, I cannot repeat the first two. So I only have 13 options left. So that will be for the ice cream. And then for uh, syrup, they have 12. I have to pick three distinct. So the first option, I have 12 distinct flavor to choose from. And then the next one, don't repeat the first one. Then I have 11. And then the next one, I have 10. So three distinct syrups. And then uh, four distinct toppings from seven. So four distinct toppings. So the first topping, I have seven options. The next one is six, and then a five, and then a four. Now, uh, I know the, the product of that equals to a huge value. So let's do a what if. Now, the here is the what if. What if I take away the distinct, distinct and distinct. You can repeat your option uh, infinitely many times. So that means for the ice cream, I can pick banana, 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 or, or strawberry, strawberry, strawberry. Uh, for the syrup, I can pick uh, caramel, 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 or uh, 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 chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. I can pick three identical flavors. So if so, then that will be 15 times 15 times 15, 12 times 12 times 12, 7 times 7 times 7 times 7, if you can pick the, the same flavor. So let's... Let me give you what the total is. So 15 times 14 times 13 times 12, 11, 10, 7, 6, 5, and 4. Wow, that equals to a huge value. Okay, so you can make that many different banana split. Okay, dress. You are trying to decide your dress before going to school. You have 28 jackets, 23 pants, and then 17 pairs of sneaker. You pick one of each. So the total would be 28 times 23 times 17. So 28 times uh, 23 times 17. You have how many combinations? That many combinations. Now, here is a what if. Uh, what if today is super cold? I need to pick two jackets. So that will be 28. And then when it comes to the next jacket, you cannot pick the first one anymore, right? You are already wearing the first one. So that will be a 27. So two distinct jackets. And then uh, one pants, one uh, pair of sneakers, so times 23 and then times 17. So that gives you another total, 28 times 17, 27 times 23 times 17. So that gives you this. All right, so that will be all for the multiplication principle. I see you all in the next lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to discuss permutation, which is another uh, math 
and other counting techniques. All right, I see you all in the next lesson. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and like. Signing out.